This is the month of the 11th hour miracle God. I'm sure, I've been showing you that there's no how you can generate miracles without faith. Oh, Ligba, Yanu, Lai, Sigbagbo. And today, let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And um, or let's start with Hebrews 10. Hebrew, not, not Romans 10. Hebrews 10, 38. We'll look at two scriptures. And we'll see Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. We are all going to stand up to read together. It's on screen. Let's be on our feet as we read together. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. After the count of three, I want us to read one, two, and three. Let's go now. The just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no player in him. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. After we have read, we'll come back, we'll sit down, we'll come back to that Hebrew thing. Now, let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now, look at the B part. But the just shall live by what? His faith. Be seated in his presence. Father, we ask again for revelation this afternoon. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and amen. Now, go back to that Hebrews 10, 38. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any, any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Why do we need faith? I answered one question last week. We saw 11, Hebrews 11:6 11, last week. Without faith, you can't please God. This morning, I saw, I answered another question without faith. First John 5, 4. You can't conquer. And I taught them how to conquer by faith. Now, you are looking at it. Without faith, you can't live. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, you cannot live. Which means the, the, the just shall die without faith. Which means the just shall die. You know what they call to live? To live means to enjoy the flow of God's miracle. Now, there is no how you can continue to enjoy the flow of miracles, hear me, if you don't have faith. But I'm not going to dwell so much on that. I've answered that question. But and while we read Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, I love that Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 B. It says the just shall live by his own faith, which means that we all, you and I, Ha, need our own personal faith. Look at it. But the just shall live by his faith. By his faith. Now, and if you look at it clearly, it's clear. Everybody needs to have his own. You have your own, I have my own. Now, which means that my faith is not strong enough to help you if you don't have your own. Hello, am I communicating? Your faith cannot help me if I don't have my own. My faith does not cover my wife's faith. My wife's faith cannot cover me. The just shall live by his own. So everyone that wants to enjoy life, that wants to enjoy the blessing of God, that wants to enjoy the miracles of God, that wants to enjoy the move of God, must learn to have his own personal faith. A lot of reason, uh, people in, come to prayer meetings, they go home not having their miracles, not because the pastor is not anointed. But because they do not have their own faith. The pastor is praying, but they don't have their own faith. And it is clear here that you can't borrow anybody's faith. Faith is not borrowable. I mean, it's like, borrow me your faith. We all need our one-on-one -on -one faith. Because the situations of life that will face each of us is one-on-one. -on -one. There's nothing like corporate situation. Praise the Lord, church. So my focus this morning... The reason why I brought you to church this morning is that as a person, I want to teach you how to develop your faith. Because you need your own. You need your own. Everybody needs faith. Without faith, we can't live. Without faith, we can't move, enjoy the move of God. Without faith, we cannot enjoy the power, the power of God. But we need our own faith. You know, if our faiths come together, now that's when we, we do greater exploits. 
You know, there was a time in the book of Acts of the Apostles, Paul the Apostle was preaching, and the Bible talks about a man that was crippled. The Bible says uh, Paul preached to a point. He saw that the man had faith to walk. Paul didn't minister to him until he saw that the man has a personal faith to walk. Paul now said, come and stand up and begin to walk. And the man jumped up and started walking. If the man had not shown that he had a personal faith, Paul saw it on his face. If you don't have faith, it will show. If you have faith, it will show. So every child of God should begin to understand. Gone are those days where it will be, uh, uh, Pastor, you are anointed, uh, are, because you are the anointed, please pray for me, it will happen. It doesn't happen like that, oh. You need your personal faith to join with what the, the one the pastor has to now pray for you. Now, the case of even the woman, that uh, a woman with the issue of blood, shows us that at times, even if the pastor does not have the faith, you can connect. Jesus, our Lord, didn't know that that woman had issue of blood. Jesus didn't minister to her. He was just going on his own. The woman concluded from home. If I touch the hem of the garment of this man of God, I know I shall, be, I shall be healed. And she went for that, touched the garment, and she was healed. How do I develop my personal faith? Popular scripture we all know. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. I just want to quickly show you that scripture, then I begin to explain some things. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Let's read together. Look up. One, two, three, and let's go. So then, I didn't hear you. Let's go. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now look up. Faith comes by hearing. Doubt also comes by hearing. Fear comes by hearing. Courage comes by hearing. So this morning, the Lord just was placing it in my heart yesterday that I should show you some things. What you should not give your hearing to. There are certain things you must not give your ears to. If you don't stop hearing these things, hear me, there is no how you can develop faith. Because faith cometh by hearing. But let's first close the one. Let me show you the things you should not give your ears to anymore. No matter who is saying it. Whether your parents, whether you find yourself in the wrong church and they are saying it, there are some things that if you give your ears to, it will kill your faith. It should not allow your faith life to grow. Let's look at them. There are three of them. Number one, don't give your ears to demoralizing words. Do not give your ears to words that demoralize you. Now, when I say demoralizing words, I'm talking about words that destroys your, your you know, that destroys you morally, that destroys your thinking. Words that makes you feel worthless. Imagine for you to be telling somebody you are just useless. You are just useless. Now these are words, if you continue to hear such words, it will demoralize you. It will kill the you in you. We had an experience in our school. You know, a child, would, you know, a primary student, always would just be crying. The teachers had to call him. Why are you crying? He will be writing, he will just stop. He will start crying. He will be writing again, he will stop, he will start crying. The teachers now ask, why are you crying, young man? Young boy, why are you crying? He said, my mother looked at me, and my mom said to me, we are just wasting our money on you. We are just wasting our money on you. Now, a primary two boy should not be at least more than seven years old, or eight. For, for him to be thinking of that word, he will be writing in class, he will just stop. My mommy say, my mommy say, we are just wasting money on you. In fact, the teachers had to decide, we will invite the mom, we will sit her down. And let her know that she's killing this boy. Do you know that there are so many children of God, that is the environment they grow. So many wives say to their husband, There are, See, parents, let me talk to you. Even if you are angry, even if your child is a dumb, don't call them useless. Don't call them worthless. You could use other words. I don't know what is wrong with you. I don't know why you are behaving like this. But say you, you, you are totally jamong or con. You are totally jamong or con. Waste to go any. You are totally yet to buy a cat here. Son, only a moment. Waste, waste in it. Can't come back. She be a bad being or two. Don't say such words. These are the words that so many people have heard. That no matter what the pastor is preaching in church, you are killing it in their hearts at home.
Sing this song with me. So that whatever you have believed as a lie, you will wave it away. Born to me. I'm born to reign in life. I'm not an ordinary person. Listen to that song. I'm destined for greatness. Born to reign. I'm born to reign in life. I'm not an ordinary person. I'm destined for greatness. I want to hear you. Let me hear you sing that song now. Shout it aloud. Come on. In me, I can't hear your voice. have been killed they are still living because of what they have given their ears to i wrote down in my notes people that says you are just worthless useless and impossible they are killing you gradually do you know that this was what the recabite father did to his generation jeremiah 35 from verse 3 show me to verse 10 he told, he gathered his children and told them, in our family, in our family, we are not destined to build anything great. And calling in our family, we don't drink wine. Akim wine. Akim wine. Show me Jeremiah 35 from verse 3. Look at, look at what the word of the Lord says. Then I, I took Jezaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Azbezaniah, his brother, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. Verse 4, and I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igadaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, above the chamber of Masaniah, the, the son of Shalom, the, the keeper of the door. Yes, all those powerful names, they're like tongue speaking. Then I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabite, bowls of, of bowls full of wine and cups, and I said to them, drink wine. I said to them, drink. But they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father commanded us saying, you shall drink no wine. You know your sons forever. Ah. But they said, okay, next verse. You shall not what? Build a house. You shall not what? Sow a seed. You shall not what? Plant a vineyard. Nor have any of you this. But all your days you shall dwell in tents. That you may live many days in the land where you are sojourners. Can you imagine? That's what their father told them. What have they been telling you? That has killed your faith. That has made you to believe that you don't have hope for yourself again. God has sent me to tell you this morning. That as faith comes by hearing, fear and doubt also come, come by hearing. And every negative thing you have been hearing is what will determine what you believe. Let's read on. Thus, we have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he charged us to drink no wine. All our days, we, our wives, our sons, our daughters, we have not drank wine. Move on. Shagadabasene. Legadabas. Nor to build any build ourselves houses to dwell nor do we have vineyards filled or seeds we don't have any of those things because of what our father has told us verse 10 the last one we are going to solve but we have dwelt where in tents and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab, our father commanded us can you imagine listen you are you have the rights to determine the environment where you grow but if the environment where you grow, it, all they tell you is you are useless, you are just impossible, you are just like your father, you are just like your mother. You know, there are people like that, they talk like you are like your father. No matter how we invest on you, you will still misbehave. Now, and if you are here, you are the type saying that, you better stop it. Because what you are doing, you are killing the morale 
of that person. Do you know it almost happened to David? 1 Samuel chapter 20, chapter 7, 17, sorry. 1 Samuel 17, 26 to 30. It almost happened to David. The Bible says he was talking to those men. What do you think the king will give to anyone that killed Goliath? What do you think the king will give to anyone that killed Goliath? Then David spoke to the men. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should devour the armies of the living God? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And the people answered him, In this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him, this Philistine. Move on, move on, move on. So now Eliab, his older brother, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was arose against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. For you have come down to see. Can you imagine? That's what his brother was telling him. Even if your children offend you, be mindful what you say to them. It's too powerful. You are killing that child. Well, I love David. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a curse? In verse 30, the Bible says, he turned to another direction. Leave every environment where all they tell you is words that kill you. Because faith and doubt come from the same source. What's that? Hearing. Say here. hear. Number two, what should you not give your ears to? Number two, don't give your ears to fearful words. Words that, that only talk about how powerful your enemies are. Places where the power of God is not talked about. Stay away from such places. You know, there are some churches you go. If the pastor preached for three hours, two hours, 59, 56 minutes, he will talk about the devil. Ah, hours. Am, am I communicating at all? There are places like that. And that, you know, that's where so many people like to go. Where they will call prayer and they will say, ah, yes, whoa. ah, you know. I was angry one day in my spirit. I went to preach in a fellowship. As I finished preaching, I gave one pastor the microphone. I said, please come and round up, pray for the people. As the pastor came up, he wanted to lead prayer. Instead of him to use the word of God to lead the people in prayer, he told them about an accident of a woman that has five children and all her children die. He said, ah, this woman, all her children die on the express. We are going to pray. And it was a prayer meeting for widows. And all the women say, Ah, Jesus. I just collected the microphone from his hand. I said, Stop it. You don't pray out of fear. God won't listen. Your connection to God is not fear. Your connection to God is faith. You don't serve God out of fear. If you serve out of fear, you are not connecting. If you ask them, Why are you serving God today? They don't want to go to a fire. I'm not serving God because I don't want to go to a fire. I'm serving God because he loved me. He paid the price for me, for my safety. And I want to show him that love back. Don't go to an environment where all they talk about is fearful things. Some of you, all you listen to is really you, Your radio is gone. Go and saw it. How many are you? Oh, number three. Don't give your ears to failures. People who all they talk about are their failed plans, failed assignments. I come again. Don't give your ears to failures. People who all they talk about is nothing but their plans that has failed. Ah, ah. She marriage ni wano kumba ya ah. Okuni buru ah. Ikalo biri 
Ah, unko yawo eni suida. Ah, ejo lo bi. Ah, unko ko eni kini ko. Ejo lo kuni. You don't need such people around your life. You know there are people like that. They are failures. If you say you are saving, ah, only saving. Ah, in the ever jale yeng befo. Ah, morala kuni kamba. Ah, un save lawo koti gbaju eti kufide. And you o je no we ngba to wa laye komo to jogun o je tete ya je ogbon they are failures i always tell people see if you are failing in any way it's because you have not learned the lesson if you fail in a part sit down why did i fail in this exam of life pick the lesson apply it and move again if you surround yourself with failures, they will kill your faith. Because they will only show you reasons why what you are planning, what you want to do will not work. That was exactly what the spies came to come and cause in Israel. Let's read it. Let's read it. Please borrow me extra 10 minutes. Let's read it. Numbers. Chapter 13. 25 to 33. Then we'll read chapter 14, 1 and 2. Numbers 13 from verse 25. Out of those leopards, I mean those spies, look at this. So Moses sent, sorry, and they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Emma, whoa. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruits of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. They brought the fruits of the land out. Move on. Then, they, nevertheless, look at where they missed it. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. And the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of, the, of Anak. We saw them there. Verse 29. Verse 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites. And the Amorites dwell in the mountain. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. They were saying all the people we saw. Look at, they only gave report, good reports in one verse. It flows with milk and honey. This is the fruit of the land. But they were talking about the enemy in all of the verses. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession. For we are able to conquer it. We can conquer. What kind of report are you giving? Jump to chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Now, but by the report these men gave, they caused havoc. The entire nation as Israel. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and started crying. And the people wept that night. Why were they crying? They were crying, ah, those people that went to see the land. They said the giants are living there. Show me verse 2. The giants are living there. Ah, the giants will destroy us. The Anakites will destroy us. And the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Can you see? Don't put failures around you. Anybody that has not achieved anything great before, don't let them be your tight friend. When you are choosing friends, choose people that are ready to do what you are doing or have done what you are about to do. If you choose people that are failures, failures are those that are not, they are not ready to move again. They've gotten to a point they have plateaued. They discover there's nothing, there's nothing that inspires them again. Don't put them around you. They will kill your faith. Ah, emiti bakamu. Failures ni yao. Emiti bakamu. Oye ke lo joy in sister awo me awo Catholic. Miro koko koko kumbomo. At this age, oko ulufefem. 
I want to draw. Ah, I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to do the reading. I got to go sing. I come here. We just want to perform. They want to kill your faith, sir. In this experience of ministry, I have seen. I've told you before. Now we had one sister in our church. Sister Ifoma. Sister Ifoma was about forty. Never married before. Ma. And very choppy, yes. Very fat woman. One of them, a long time ago. And anytime we are praying, Papa, just pray for me. Just pray for me on marriage. As God we have it, a dropout in seminary, last, last stage of father, father's uh, course. I don't know what they call that course in the Catholic. Oti Shebo, Oti Lo, Verdi, Father, Oti Shebo, course, last stage, not it. Ja. But on Jawa, ni Baton Tija, on Tom, on Ushi, Father, Mom, my Mari. Which means God has husband for her. Ma, oh Lord, you have to father, 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 and he did not know if you are father, and she look on the cool reserve for sir, sir, for her. Can you see that this God is too much? Some of you, God has a promise for you that you are, you are going to stay abroad. God has sent a brother ahead and you are struggling with brothers in Nigeria. The person that will marry you is waiting for you in America. You are struggling with the brothers in, in hell. According. <laughs> oh God. God has a way of doing his thing. So these men started crying based on the reports those men came to give them. Before I used to think I can use my relationship with just everybody to encourage everybody. And what relationship come to my kubai? Relationship with failures will implicate you. You don't use relationship to encourage anybody. Because some people are not going anywhere. Do you know that because of the statement that these 10 men came to tell this, the people, the entire, the entire nation got angry, they spoke against God, God killed so many of them. God now gave them a promise. That everyone that is matured, that became angry like this, will never enter the promised land. That was what made their journey 40 years. Because the, the spies went for 40 days. So what do I say? Don't give your ears to failures. Stop accommodating failures around your life. Some people are very rich in failed experience. If you don't love, if you don't failed experience. Oh, mama, mu lawe lawe fwen. It did not go to fashion of any work. Oh, mama, mu lawe lawe fwen. They are profess professors of in failures, professional failures. What they don't know is that failing will continue in a person's life until he's able to pick the lessons. Look at that time that our, our thickness was preparing to let me food. I know people will be saying, ah, but no, she know, don't know by, don't know by. But she has, she has aim. And somebody said, I believe, hear me, in the school of success, failure is a compulsory cause. Everybody will go, I failed this. We've done businesses and failed. We've done ministry and failed. But we didn't close up. We started again. Ah, charity, some branches we have closed. Everything. Tell them to pack their things, come back home, come back home, come back home. But when I sit down, go back to drawing, but what did you not do right? Yeah, go, go and start again, start again, start again. What should I give my hearing to? What should you give your ears to? Number one, give it to the word of God. Words that shows you the power of God. Give your ears to the word of God. The words that show how powerful God is. And one roll on to so be a bar along with to be to. Only 
Some of you, when they preach the real gospel, you won't listen. When they preach the fearful gospel, your eyes will be open. I will tell you the names of 24 demons. You will see that everybody will be praying. We have been there before. Give your ears to the word of God. Words that shows the power of God. Words that shows the principle of God. These are the things you give your ears to. You know, there are some, there are some, there are some stories you read in the Bible, your faith will jack up. Like me, anytime I want to jack up my faith, I always do it once a year. I'll go back and read the book of Acts of the Apostles from chapter 1 to the end. I do it every year. My prayer life will be stirred up. My faith life will be stirred up. Number two, give your ears to the testimonies of the act of God in the lives of people. Listen, that's the second thing. My God, testimony. That one, your body share testimony. You won't let your own shine in a year one. My, my, my Joe won't. Jack will do a bad or a lot of so. Jack will be bad boys. Okay. We came for the communion service on Tuesdays. One of our daughters was strong. And I asked her, what's wrong? She told me. He said, but one of the people that diagnosed me said it's an arrow. I said, oh, fuck it. Arrow, okay. And in her countenance, she has believed the arrow. Okay, let's cast out the arrow now. Abi, she won't tell me. I don't know And after praying for her, go and spend like a few minutes with mama. She was discussing with mama and her life was coming back. In short, far. I mean, it's not, of, it's not arrow. <laughs> it's off. Off her call. Off her. She won't buy it. Off her wrong mindset. And it is false, false prophets that always spread this kind of report. Ah. Ah, Kilarini Wajo Meni or Bai. Emil Chen, Emil Ndro. There's one day one came to our street. Ha, Ati, Lubai, or Emelon, Tidari, what's up, the boy? Only Bawa and Shinko Jones of prophecy, Emino Basso Kale. Tuba soap, my dead, by tea. Someone Kojalo. I could see Kulin Koko, Matu Kojabo, Kuturin Koko, Mutu Kojalo. I've made up my mind I will slap him. So I was going, I was coming. By the time I was going and coming about eight times, he didn't see anything. I went to stay one someplace. I was looking at him. Let him just see something and point to me. He didn't see anything. He was just going gently. Give your ears to testimonies. I always like to listen to testimonies because it tears my faith up. I had one testimony. I don't use to forget that testimony. It was shared in the camp. The people were trusting God for fruit of the womb. They attended the camp meeting. Baba prayed general prayer. And the woman said, God told her, I will give you twins. Lo and behold, they this can. It was one. Lo and behold, on the day of delivery, she gave back to one boy. They did naming ceremony in eight days. One week after naming ceremony, she said she was having stomach ache. Ah, you know, one back when was hospital. She just delivered two weeks ago. She has stomach ache. Please, doctor, check. Ah, doctor, this can. He said, What I'm seeing is another baby. And the way I'm seeing it, it's like she's in labor. She deliver a baby girl. How will they be doing birthday? Abi and they are twins. You testimony. I stood up where I was just speaking. Yeah, God, that God, they get it. You know, testimonies tears up. That's why the Bible says they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimonies. If you don't have testimony, my son, be. That year, oh my, Rufet, yes, okay. Is it the, an, another one I had? 
the woman had suffered delay 15 years and the husband told the doctor please I don't want labor please operate my wife because we have waited so long for this baby and they are twins they operated her and brought out the babies that was exactly what happened in my time when my wife she delivered two years they brought the baby they'll bring baby first I remember how the nurse came and gave me my baby and said this is your baby uh, I said, please where's my wife we just want to give her the baby to you so that we can take care of your wife ah, please I want to see my wife oh. the man said after he received his babies he was still waiting one hour they didn't bring his wife then after one hour the doctor came out hi it's my wife he said your wife is fine then what happened he said this is my 35 years of operating women but this is the first time that I will bring out babies and I couldn't find the womb Ibulomawa Durosi he said what I was looking for was the womb I brought out these babies I've been looking I didn't see the womb at all Emi oliru Olorun Eyiri Eyo Eyo La sojo La sojo Ti Motiri Eyo Eyo Ah Rise up on your feet. Lato Joe, Lato Jotty, Motiri. Yeah. Ah, Shagada, Bada, Bada, Bada. Mio Rio. that Pastor Kumui's wife has never married before. Or oh, you didn't know? Kumari Ri after his first wife, his wife died. The one that is, that's the mommy Gio now has never married before. <laughs> he didn't forget you. He said, I should tell you. Come on. Help me pick the solo of that song from the beginning. God has sent me to you this morning. Let me hear you. He has never forgotten me.
I remember when you would have died now, Dickness. After we gave back to that operation that brought Hero. Have you forgotten? That's when she will have died. They have discharged her. After being discharged, she had got, got to, doctor said, go and eat. Have you, do you remember? He could not bear his Ha! When they call me, she pastor is easy. Hold on. She pastor is easy. You know, there are some people in church. Eh? Oh, but of all, oh. When she called me, I carried my wife. The doctor is our friend. As we got to the hospital, the doctor said, Pastor, I don't know. Ah, it's not supposed to be somebody like from your place. I said, What happened? He said, We are going to take her back to theater. We've tried everything to make her release gas. It's not working. I said, Then what is it? He said, Pastor, it is 70 30. 70 percent of death. I said, then doctor, what are we looking for? so she can gas. Ah! Hey. You're not supposed to fear anything again. Anything. Then we started praying. I am my wife. What's the name of that hospital, sir? To be hospital, yeah. About bury a drug and so Uluwa, Uluwa, Iso, Uluwa, Iso. Lord, she must gas. Father, she must gas. My wife just called me from inside just because she was with her inside. The doctor was preparing the theater. Hello, honey, honey. honey. I said, what happened? She has, she has started. She has started. I said, she has started what? She has started gas. And she too have said, I've started, I've started, I've started. And the thing was talking, bra, 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 I've started, bra, bra, bra. I've started. The doctor gave me 50,000 naira that day. Pastor, this is a miracle. He gave me 50K. Because our calling was placed on the line. God did not forget you. But you should understand. You should understand that this. Listen, there is nothing God can do in your case. If your faith is not active, the just shall live by his own faith. If the faith is not there, there is nothing God can do. And the only thing that can make your faith to be alive is what I've shown you. Disassociate from failures. Disassociate from negative minded people, people that only tell you bad things. Disassociate from people that does not see any future in you. Disassociate, disconnect from them. I have never seen any Christian that is addicted to personal Bible study that doesn't have faith. Can I pray for you now? Are you having, no matter what you are trusting God for, open your eyes. God cannot do it if your faith is not there. Because your faith is your connection. No matter what your medical condition is. Ah, should I share the testimony of Sister Bola? Sister Bola was going to 40. The brother that married her was 27. Share, share more sister Bola. Okay, I think the church in by. Talu more sister Bola. Okay, you know, you know, when you think the church in by. Okay, about one church. Eh, and you know about one church. Mrs. Dixon, my more sister Bola, dada. When they wanted to go and, when the brother wanted to go and pre present her, the, the young man was a uh, marine engineer. Bola was selling at Agbeni. One by one, make papa. Olu fell off me, homo me, we run by me. Oh, how can we chill up? Money man worry about that one. 
money what jeans at the t-shirt what pray for lord make i look young benjamin moon bola daily one bow or your wedding would you want to see what's your lord reception in my money are how benjamin you can't marry old woman that one concern you will have joined them ah i won't forget her testimony oh you are part of the best man will you build your faith that's what i see i want to sign up there's no time i've spent time you are entitled eh? you have right to determine what you should hear please understand you have right When you are when something does, you know that the words that are coming is killing your disassociate. Are we set? Let's go. Today I'm a walara on to my okay church and woman pegon. I won't look calling my walara on a woman pegon. Papa about to preach woman pe woman pe my king pe. Me service, my appella you or not. I am at least service. Monique, that's all office me. I'm at least on office me. We only have sixty nine thousand in that account.